We're tracking breaking news for you out of Iran. That country's foreign minister says that Flight 752 was unintentionally shot down by an Iranian missile. In a tweet, the minister says that quote, human error led to the disaster. An Iranian military statement reveals the plane was mistaken for what they describe as a hostile target. The country says those responsible for the strike will be prosecuted. Iran's government had repeatedly denied accusations it was responsible until now. Wednesday's crash killed all 176 people on board, including 57 Canadians. Well, to get his take on this story, we've reached out to Christian Luprecht. Now, he's a professor of political science at the Royal Military College at, and Queen's University, and we've reached him in Kingston, Ontario. Professor Luprecht, always enjoy having you on the show. Your insights are terrific to have. And at a point like this, can we ask you, what do you make of this breaking news of Iran's admission? Well, it's really interesting. You know, this is a region where it's all about saving face. So coming through with an admission at all is a major shift in the narrative that we had gotten. It's also taking up the prime minister on the olive branch that he had quasi extended because the prime minister signaled that the intelligence was overwhelming. So regardless to what extent the Iranians do or don't cooperate with the investigation, um, that it was clear what the investigation was going to show. And it's also interesting that Iran stepped away from some of the conspiracy theories that it had started spinning around this, clearly opting not to take the route that Russia take, uh, took after MH17 and trying to find a middle ground where they can make the best of a difficult situation uh, for the regime overall. So I guess the question now is where does this leave Iran uh, in terms of what it is dealing with internationally and what it is dealing with domestically? So uh, Iran, I think, decided not to gamble on this one. Uh, the uh, foreign minister, Canada had been quite astute in this. The foreign minister, of course, had already gotten out ahead of Iran's statement yesterday, saying that Canada had built an international coalition of the countries that had citizens on this flight. And I think this was a signal that Canada was prepared to, to try to lobby for sanctions. If they couldn't get an agreement at the United Nations Security Council on that, uh, that there would have uh, at least be the sort of um, a bilateral, multilateral sanctions we have seen with regards to Russia and that Iran, I guess, figured on the one hand, they can't afford more sanctions. Um, and, uh, you know, these would have run counter also, you could argue, to Canadian interests because Canada wants to have de-escalation in the region. It wants to restart the NATO mission. All of that would have been more difficult, but Canada needed to send a signal if Iran wasn't going to cooperate. For Iran, it has the advantage that they can blame the driver and the three operators of this SA-15 battery, and they don't have to have a broad investigation into the chain of command, uh, possibly hold people higher up accountable, because chances are uh, there's more people responsible than simply those four. You blame the lowest level of individuals as having to make a terrible mistake. We don't have to get into debates whether this was a, an, a genuine accident of somebody pushing the button, or it was a case of mistaken identity, um, and uh, everybody can walk away. Walk away, and yet for Canadians uh, who need answers, the families of those uh, 57 Canadians killed on board uh, for the need to identify remains, to repatriate remains, is there any sense that Iran might be more open to uh, Canada's involvement on the ground there to provide some closure for the Canadian citizens' families killed? To the contrary, I suspect this is Iran's idea of cooperating without actually cooperating. We know that uh, the uh, the members of the TSB were still waiting for their visas uh, because Iran had not agreed to grant the visas for the whole group that Canada had wanted to send. It means Iran does not have to give unfettered access to the crash site, to those investigators. Um, it means that uh, Iran does need, not need to, will, will likely not hand over all the evidence. It means Canadian investigators will not be able to take pieces of the plane home uh, for ind independent um, testing here in Canada. And Iran will say, look, what else do you, do you want? Uh, we'll let you see some of the data on the flight recorder, um, and that'll be it. So that means that um, at the same time, it means that within the Republican Guard, look, the SA-15 is only operated by the Republican Guard. There's only 29 of those uh, units. 
Um, and so it means we understand the chain of command within the Republican Guard, we understand the chain of command within the air defenses, and so we could have had an MH17-like investigation. Um, we know that this can be done. Um, the Dutch showed that even without cooperation from Russia, they can demonstrate who was responsible, where the projectile came from, and whatnot. And so uh, I think this is sort of an effort to try to forestall having that sort of uh, investigation responsibility. So I think in some ways it will actually mean denying full justice for the victims by simply holding the lowest level possible responsible in the hope that, uh, for, for the Iranian regime, in the hope that uh, they can forestall this broader investigation into responsibility. So some answers, but in the long run, perhaps not uh, satisfaction for so many other parties. Uh, Professor Luprecht, thank you so much. We really appreciate your insight. It's been my pleasure. Good morning. You too, sir. Christian Luprecht is a professor of political science at the Royal Military College in Queen's University, and he joined us from Kingston, Ontario.